Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Hello, and thank you for joining us on the OpenShift live streaming networks. Uh, we are live streaming on Twitch, Facebook Live, and YouTube Live. Today, I am joined by Adrian Reber from uh, Red Hat, and I will let him introduce himself, but the topic of today is, uh, we'll discuss in a second, but the correct pronunciation of Kriu, uh, and uh, how to deep dive into you know some of the things that can show you. Um, so yeah, Adrian, please introduce yourself for the audience and tell us more about what we're diving into. Thanks. Um, so my my name uh, was already said. I am I am working on uh, on Creu for uh, I'm, I'm working on process migration for at least ten years now. And, and Kriu came up around 2012. And since then, I'm somehow involved in Kriu in different parts, first in um, container and uh, in, in high performance computing more. And when I joined Red Hat in 2015, I, I started to look more into, into container migration. And nice. that's also what I want to talk um, about today here, um, container live migration. And especially how it's connected with Creu and how Creu enables you to migrate a process and a, and a container in the end. And give an overview of what's currently doable, show demos how to do it. And yeah, I'm I'm gonna start sharing my slides now. Fire away, buddy. Let's let's do this. Um, this should be my yep. slides. Container okay. Live migrations. Yeah. So that's my introduction. <laughs> so um, a lot of things which I'm mentioning today are um, also available in, in, a, in a blog post at, at redhead.com. And this is all based on the RHEL 8.1 beta, which what, what is written there. This is a bit more, has more rough edges than today. So what you're going to see today, it's, it's actually easier than what you see in, in the blog. But it's all written down, all the steps there, if you follow those. You can actually do the same things I'm doing today. So um, I want to show us a few use cases, how you could use um, container migration, what it's good for, then give a lot of details about Creu, how it enables you to do um, checkpoint restore, and then um, a few demos for the use cases I presented. and. A few things I'm looking what could be done in the future with um, container live migration, how it is working today. So awesome. um, I, I found out a good thing to do is give a de definition what container live migration is, um, because this is often a thing people uh, ask me, what is it? And and for me, it's it's pretty simple. It's, it's basically the same what a virtual machine migration would be. So um, you just transfer a running container from one system to another. It could be stateful migration. It could be live migration. It's the thing just keeps on running in the same point in time. It, it stopped on one system, and then it continues to run on the other system. And the, it's, the, the steps to do it are, are pretty easy. It's You somehow serialize your con running container on one system. You transfer it to the destination system. And on the destination system, you you restore it, and then it keeps on running. So that's the basic idea how this could work or should work. And this everything I'm talking about today is based on um, Creu. Creu is uh, short for um, Checkpoint Restore in User Space. Awesome. And there are multiple integrations of Creu in different container runtimes, container engines. And I will mainly um, focus on um, on Podman today because that's what I have been working on the last two years or so. And before um, continuing with um, the use cases, what how to use um, live migration, um, I think I want to show a, a short demo how to migrate a single process with Creu, no containers, nothing, just a single process. I will stop sharing my slides. I will start sharing my demo window. Beautiful. Can you see it? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I have a really simple um, um, program I call, it's called Minimal. That's my minimal test case if I do changes to Creu. 
And what it does, it uses 100 megabytes of memory, writes the memory, and then it sleeps for a second, and then it prints out the host name and continues doing this. And the reason I'm printing out a host name is so that I can see if I migrate it to another host that it's actually another host name. Okay. So um, let's switch to another screen here. And now I will do um, CRIU and then dump to checkpoint the process to dump the process on disk. And then I will tell it I want to, I have to specify the, the PID I want to um, dump. Mm -hmm. it's, it's called minus T because CRIU always dumps a complete process tree. So you cannot just dump one process without a child process. You have to dump always all the child processes or process. And, and this is because it's pretty unlikely that it will work if you lose one of your child processes. So it will dump the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, oh, let me, let me show it to you that it's actually running here. Grab minimal. Yeah, so this, uh, the, it's, it's running here. It's yep. using 100 megabytes of memory. And now I also know the, 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 the PID. Mm -hmm. What I usually do is I just say uh, tick of minimal. Oh, and then okay. um, because the process is using the, the, the console, this is, this is mm -hmm. actually this is a, a bit more tricky part to, to dump correctly. But uh, Crew has um, um, made it possible. So I say minus J for shell job. And then I say a destination directory where I want to dump it. I just say to dump, dump. And then I also say. Um, leave running so the um, process continues to running uh, continues to run on my uh, source system of the um, migration and and now I actually have to create the directory I think before running the dump that helps so, so let's hope it works that sounds good it says um, interrupt the system call because I actually sleep for four seconds, so it mm -hmm. has to interrupt the system call there. But now I should have a dump here in um, a, a checkpoint in my dump directory, and it's 100 megabytes. This um, wow. it's the same as the memory um, it, it used um, when running. If I switch back to my other screen, I see the process is still running. So now I have a copy running, and I have a copy stopped. Mm -hmm. What I will do now, I will transfer the, the checkpoint from one. I'm running here on two virtual machines. Sure. So my laptop is running Fedora, and I have two RHEL 8.2 VMs, which I'm using here. So now I transfer it to the other one. Um, let's see. So it's transferred to the other okay. one. Let's SSH into that machine. And, and it, now, it dumped the PS tree, the stats, the whole nine yards. That's cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, the, the whole process has been has been dumped. Um, and we can actually look inside. Um, I hope there I have. There's a, there's a tool called Crit, which is Creu image tool. And it should be able to tell me um, information about my, my dumped process. Let's see. Maybe I try to have a look at files. Should be interesting, maybe. I don't know. It's, it's too much information. JQ or there. something, or yeah. So it says uh, at least here you can see it says yeah, uh, running root, as root, and, the mode, yeah. the whole nine yards. Yeah, the the, the, um, the shell terminal it uses and which libraries are using it. Gosh, and so this, this ties this ties so well with the stream we ended with yesterday with Scott McCarty just basically showing us like this is you know containers are basically just stuff on a file system just and the process gluing it all together kind of thing. So yeah, like this is a very nice dovetail into that. Beautiful. Yeah, and and one important thing is um, Creo actually checks if the if the library has changed, and you cannot restore a process if the library has changed because if the library has changed, then the the functions the process is using of the library are probably at another address and because the libraries are not loaded again they are just mapped into the process again it will it would just jump somewhere into the library where the wrong code is so creo actually checks and makes sure that the library is the same um 
during and before migration. And, and, and this is the reason why containers are especially well suited for CRIU because the libraries will not change in a container if you reboot your system. Um, if you okay, update so, your container, you cannot checkpoint it. Right, so a uh, quick note here, no one can see your terminal. Uh, everyone sees multiple extension integrations exist. Uh, I can see your terminal in Zoom, so that's interesting. What's going on? Oh, okay. Let's do me a favor. Stop sharing your screen and okay. then start sharing your terminal again. Okay. I stopped sharing the screen and I share the application window again. Better now? Uh, yes, it looks like it came through. It took a second, but yes. All right. Okay, so uh, I'll continue Sorry, here. Folks. Um, so basically he did a cryu dump, did the look up a PID, and uh, yeah, people are asking like, just, just restart the entire thing. That I, makes I total sense it. to me. Yeah. Yeah, okay, no, no problem. So, <laughs> Sorry, folks. So, um, so the, the process here, I will also restart the process. So um, the process I had is share minimal. I already said this is my minimal test case. It basically just prints out a host name and uses 100 megabytes of memory. Then I will uh, remove the checkpoint because um, it, it would work even if I don't remove it, but just that I don't have to transfer two uh, checkpoints from one system to another. So create a directory where I can dump the process into. And then I said, um, create your dump. That's the command, subcommand for checkpointing. Then I say minus T for the process tree with this PID. And then I'm lazy. I'm not looking up the PID. I just tell pit of get me the pit of my um, test process. Then I'm saying minus J um, to um, make it work with a, uh, with on a terminal, then I say minus D for destination directory where to write the checkpoint, and then I say leave running. Do not stop the process, keep it running while I'm doing the checkpoint. So the same again, interrupt system per call because the process is not doing much more than sleeps. And if I look back on the other end of my screen, I see um, that the process is still running. I will transfer the checkpoint once again to the destination system, go to my destination system. And then if I go into temp dump and do crit show files like we did before, I can see now information about my checkpoint. I see the binary which is used is called shared minimal and I see which libraries are used, which size they have and, and so on. And so um, this is, all the information uh, CRIU collects is, is in, in, in these files. And now I say um, CRIU restore to restore the process from the checkpoint. I say um, from this directory, temp dump. And I also say minus J because it's again running on a, on a console and I want to connect it to this console here on the other host. So let's look where the other um, process is. It's currently saying step 32 and rel 05. And what should happen now? It should now say step the, at a point in time when we checkpointed the process. Mm -hmm. And because how my um, test uh, program is set up, it will first print out the host name of the old name because what my test does, it does a sleep, it does prints out the host name, right. then it reads out the host name. Yeah, so it'll have that old host name still, and then it'll pick up the new one. Yeah, Yep. correct. Cool. Let's hope it works that way. Okay, I'll yeah, at least. Yeah. Oh, look, it's rel 05. Rel 05, and now it should say step 16 on rel 08. So it has reread the host name, and so checkpointing, wow. restoring, migration worked. Dumping it on one system, transferring it to, the other, to another, restoring it. Okay, so that's the the basic CRIU um, functionality. Yeah, like that's that's really really awesome to be honest with you. Um, like I was saying uh, on the stream yesterday with Scott McCarty, please check it out. Go to our video uh, archive or you know look on YouTube. You can see it. Um, the 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 things he was showing us yesterday were, were basically that you know the uh, uh, container is you know 
a process that has a bunch of files on disk, right? And it's just, you know, looking at those files and changing things as necessary and processing information and then writing to files and so forth, so on. So this CRIU scoops it all up and gives you the capability to say, all right, it's running on this box, move it over here to that box, off it goes, right? Like I have a Podman bot you know, running for a telegram channel, if I needed to move systems, this immediately comes in handy, right? Like I can already see my use case for this, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what else is going on inside? Um, like where, keep going, please continue okay. down your demonstration rabbit hole. I, I like okay. where this is going. <laughs> um, I'll just um, switch back to my slides for a bit. Um, and then I will quickly be back also at demo time with Podman then. So um, I said multiple integration exists and um, I will focus on, on Podman here. You see my slides now again, right? Uh, oh. Checking, nope. <laughs> okay, so um, unshare and then reshare. Okay, I have to do it twice every time, okay. That's fun. Okay. All right, I see in Zoom. Do I see over here in Zoom? No. Wow. Okay, so this is fun, folks. Uh, I'm looking at the Zoom that's going out on the broadcast. I don't see it. I see it on my screen over here, though, that I'm watching and talking through. So uh, fun times with Zoom screen sharing, folks. Um, okay, I'll try it once more. Yeah, why not? See? It happened over here. And over here. Yay. Oh. Cool. So now it should be going out to the stream. Okay, perfect. So, um... Awesome. So now let's talk about uh, use cases uh, when, when talking about containers. And one of the use cases is um, I have a container running and the container took forever to initialize and it has all its caches are all hot and, and it's really running fast and it would take me a half an hour to get back to this point. So one thing you can do, but you need the new kernel because of some security uh, vulnera vulnerability you want to fix. So one thing you can do is um, um, save the state of the container using checkpoint restore, reboot quickly, if your system reboots quickly, of course, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then continue running the container from that same point in time. So um, I actually made a few uh, pictures there. Um, here, this is um, the colors are basically the, the memory of the process. So I have all the memory of my host running, and my container is running on the host, um, my container host thing. And, and so what I want to do now, I, I'll checkpoint the container. So I kind of take out the memory of the running process and write it to disk. Yeah. And then I reboot my host. Uh, it's all the memory there is gone, and I restore it. And it's now different memory because it's a new kernel, or whatever. But I can still take my old memory filled container and 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 use it as it just was before. And wow, so I'll nifty. go again to my. Um, all right. Let's see how well this works now. Yes, how well this works. So. Uh, share terminal. I got it in one place. I've got it in two places. All oh. right. We've got this figured out, I think. Hopefully. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> so let's see. Are there any Podman containers? So there's no container currently running. So to demonstrate this, I actually have... This is all wrong. Let's try it again. Wildfly. Spelled Wildfly wrong. In your search. Yeah. So, so um, okay, this but is yeah. too long. Come on. So, <laughs> so I I created so so the goal for this demonstration is to have a, um, a stateful container basically. So you want so in I think in in container in pure container theory containers are stateless. You can start as many as you want and stop, and you don't care about the state in the container. But um, the whole the whole container migration um, idea um, um, kind of um, depends on it that there is a state in the container you actually want to preserve. So for my for this demonstration, I um, created a container. Um, it's it's Wildfly based. It's so this is a Java um, application server, nice. and I created um, and, and I rewrote the Hello World application to be even simpler than it was. So what it basically does it 
returns a number, increments it, and waits for the next request. And the next request will be one number larger. So it's it's as simple as it can get for a stateful container. So let's start it there. So let's uh, let's hope it's running. And I type correctly. So the container is running there. And let's see if I can talk to the container. I have too many tests running here before. And that's it. So um, this is basically just makes, I know this is also wrong. This is better. So what I'm doing now, I'm saying curl to talk to the container. And I need to know the IP address of the container. So I just use Podman inspect from the last container. I um, ask it for the IP address and use that in curl to talk to my um, Wildfly stateful application. And if I do this command now, I should get uh, a zero and it's a zero. And if nice. I do it again, it's a one oh, wow. and it's a three. Beautiful. So it's, it's beautiful and, and really simple. Yes. So now let's say um, Podman. And Java, yeah. And, and Java, so yeah. <laughs> I, all right. I actually did this also for, for 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 the documentation. I rewrote it in in in, in Python, so it's um, it's much simpler. But I don't know. It, at the time I wrote it, I somehow I felt um, it, it would be interesting in Java. The nice. interesting thing about Java here, and which I will talk, which is actually my second use case, is um, that until this container is ready to answer requests. It takes like 10 seconds um, until it's up. And if I restore it from a checkpoint, it only needs five seconds. So I can already ah. in a, on a really small scale um, gain 50% um, in, in startup time by starting it from a checkpoint with initialized uh, Java libraries. Wow. But any, anyway, so cool. let's go <laughs> Podman container checkpoint. And then I just say um, last because I just want to checkpoint my last container. So um, now it writes the image to disk, just like before. It Podman adds a few additional um, container information, um, and but now the, the checkpoint is written. If I now try to talk to my container, I just get um, a bad URL because the Podman inspect doesn't return an IP address. So let's reboot my VM. This should be. Um, Fast usually, like I don't know, five or ten seconds. Hopefully, something. fast, depending upon your NVMe or whatever yeah. underlying disk. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see, is it back again? Yeah, there, there it is. And if I now say Podman PS, um, there's no container running. If I say Podman PSA, I see there's a stop container. And this actually is the container with a checkpoint. Um, what doesn't exist in Podman, you cannot see if the container has been checkpointed or if it just has been stopped. Uh, okay. It would look like it would look the same. Um, but if I now do a restore, the restore would fail and say this is not a checkpoint. So let's um, Podman container restore again um, minus L for latest. And now um, the container is running again. Nice. Okay, and now I can again um, talk ah, to but my it's computer. Been up for three minutes. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, um, it, it, it remembers the time it, yeah. it, it had from previous Nifty. time. From, from the previous <laughs> time. So now I get three. So it doesn't start at zero. I was able to keep my state, and it continues to run where it was. Um, so this wow. is the the, yeah. the reboot use case. Um, so um, the other use case um, is, is the quick startup use case. I'm just going to do the demo right now of the quick startup use case because of the, so that we don't have to switch too often between slides and, and sure. terminal. Cool. So let's, let's do that. So I, I have this container running now. And I can talk to it. And, and my previous command was podman checkpoint minus L. And now what I can also do, this is also needed for container migration. I can actually tell podman to, to export the checkpoint to a file. And taking this file, I just can copy this file to another system. And then I do a podman uh, container restore based on this file. And the file contains everything. If the image is missing on the destination system, podman will actually pull it from the registry and uh, then restore the container. Um, and, but this is also what I'm using now to create additional copies um, of the same container. So nice. what I'm going to do now, I say now container, podman, container, 
checkpoint and I'm looking at the help quickly. So I say pod main container checkpoint and I say again minus L for latest, then I say minus minus export to export it to an external um, archive, um, which can be later imported from Podman. So I say export and I call it just checkpoint. Or GZ. And then I say minus R, I, I leave the container running. Pre the other test, when I did a reboot, um, the normal way um, Creu and, and, and Podman and Podman then also work, if you checkpoint something, the process is, is stopped, is basically killed. Mm -hmm. And but you can always tell it to keep it to keep the uh, process running. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I now say checkpoint this thing, export it to a file, but keep the container running. Oh, this is this is just interesting. This is actually fixed upstream. Um, there was a change in run C at some point that oh. um, which was yeah. not tested with the checkpoint correctly. So um, run C kind of expects when you run checkpoint that a container should be gone. It's not gone. It looks bad, but it doesn't do anything. It, yeah, it's a yeah. I think we saw some errors like that yesterday. Same kind of thing, right? Where it was like, oh yeah, it's not quite fully baked and upstream yet kind of deal, yeah. So the container still runs. I still can talk to it. I get back a four or five. So let's restore a copy of that container. I say Podman container restore. Then I say import. And then I give it my checkpoint image. And then I'll have to give it a new name because what Podman would do now, it would now try to restore the container with the same container ID and the same name it had originally. And this will fail. We can actually try this, I guess. Um, and this will fail because um, the com container exists. It says that ID already is in use. So what I can do is now I say minus minus name. I just give it a new name. And because my application is called hello, I just call it hello one. And let's restore a few copies here. Um, so this now uh, copies all the memory back into the process. So it takes like five seconds um, to restore the whole Java thing um, as it was before. And now if I do a Podman PS, I can see, um, okay, I have, um, I have hello one and hello two and the original name, which I don't know how to pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> Zeno Dacio Lamar. Yeah, yeah, that, that one. Yeah. Yeah. So now I can <laughs> say, um, now I can say uh, Podman inspect, and uh, now I'm not using minus L, now I'm just um, gonna give it a name. So now if I say Podman inspect hello one, I should get back, I, I forgot, uh, four, I guess, because that was uh, I think he went. Yeah, I think you hit yeah, three. Or, so I, I get a four here, and if I go to um, hello two, I, I also get a four, and now it's five and six, and if I do hello one again, it's five and six, and if I go to the wow. original container, which uh, is called Podman PS, so uh, let's see what I get there. It's also six. Now I have hmm. three almost identical container running with now I think now they are all at six, but the states are basically now independent of each other. So they can answer right. requests in, in in to whichever client they get from. So so this um the, the, the my my measurements here where if I do uh, maybe maybe I can uh, how, how did I do that? Um, um, I just want to show that it takes longer to start a new um, wild flight and to restore it from step to checkpoint. Let's try Podman oh, run. Yeah. Uh, no, that's all wrong. Mm -hmm. no, that's for uh, SQL Server. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, yesterday I, I tried to migrate SQL Server and it also works. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> that's I was, no joke. I was also, um, I'm Amazed sure that took that some time. <laughs> no, no. Really? I, I just, oh. Yeah, it just, it just, it just worked. Um, I was um, amazed. So it, it's, it really okay. I wasn't expecting it to, to work. So, um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start um, a container, and then I will print out date to see when it Portman 1 finished, and then I will do a 
few curls with the date command to see how long it, so it's not very scientific my measurement here, but let's um, see how it goes. And so, um, so I can still cannot talk to the container. It says still refused. So now I, uh, Wildfly is ready and needs to load the application. Mm -hmm. And so I'm now at uh, second 36. And when I started, oh no, this is now on screen here. Why I cannot scroll. Oh. Uh, the, the screen command somehow <laughs> broke my terminal, so I cannot uh, scroll. Lovely. But, Let's say it took about 10 seconds. And if I try to um, um, restore it from a checkpoint, let's see. Uh, I just print out the date, restore it as, as, as hello three, and print out the date again. And it, it usually takes like five seconds um, here, six seconds. Six so seconds. About, oh. But the other one takes like, Ten seconds, so it's a, it's a bit faster, and I guess if you get a really big wildfly container, it could be really fast. But yeah, okay. um, yeah, like that's significant, you know, considering that you know some Java apps I've seen could take you know several minutes to get everything loaded up and going. Right, like if you're storing, if you take your Java app as a dev and you check it in as a you know running container and like a some kind of you know archive or something and you just say take this tarball and then run it as a container somewhere and it'll just spin up quickly that's an interesting way to do development you know like all of a sudden your stuff's running instead of starting in production right like you <laughs> cut the start out you cut the startup time just right out right like the startup time is just merely getting everything lined up on the the the, the new system and starting it yeah that's yeah. That's yeah, so we, very, very interesting. Okay, cool. We're actually talking with a few JVM developers who want to get, who want to use Creo inside of the JVM to reduce startup time. So they, oh. they've shown it already um, that it that it can be integrated. And and one of the problems they are dealing right now is, I think, um, is that currently Creo requires to to run as root because it needs a few things. Yeah. And this yeah. makes it then again uninteresting for 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 the JVM if you always have to run it as root. But um, just a few weeks ago, we started discussions upstream uh, Linux kernel, um, hoping to get um, non-root um, Creo working there. And then it could be also interesting for, for Podman if, if we actually get right. it into the kernel of necessary interfaces there. Yeah, like I could definitely see some, some serious gains there just to be had in the JVM, the kernel itself. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting points and pieces here that could actually speed this up too, right? Like, huh, tighter integration with the kernel and the JVM and the whole nine yards, right? Like if I'm if I'm a Java developer, I am now looking at this technology and thinking, I need to keep this in the back of my head because this is something that under under the hood is going to save me some time. Okay, so hmm. I'll stop sharing the demo screen go. and let's Aaron. go back to my people can slides hope that works if you see slides back uh, here you're yeah. good yep. there was, there, right. was my, <laughs> there was my container so the other one was um use case was quick startup which i just showed now you can from a checkpoint you can create multiple copies from an already initialized container and again my nice diagrams i have the container with its state, I'll take it out of the host and I put it back multiple times into the host. And uh, the other use case is, is container live migration. What is my, my main topic kind of the talk and um, in, in my diagrams, it would like look something like this. I have my source and destination host. I take out a container from one host, transfer it to, the, to another host and restore it once or multiple times on the other host. And, um, on, on you, this way, I, I have migrated my container from one system to another. So, um, this. So there, there is a question in chat, and I don't know if you're going to touch okay. on this. How does this work with Kubernetes or OpenShift or any of the, the orchestration platforms? Okay, 
So one, I think one of my last slides is uh, is what uh, is planned for the future, and okay. um, one thing is the I can I can talk about it now. It's yeah, no problem. Let, yeah, we'll get to the question. Elastic or S one elastic. Yeah. However you say and, that. And so one, Wonderful screen one, name. <laughs> one one thing is um, um, we're working for the future is um, the. Is, is the non-root um, checkpoint restore? That's an interesting thing, which which I think is important to work on. And the other one is, um, which was kind of always one of my goals, is how to get this into Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. And I, I've, I've been thinking uh, uh, a couple of years already about this. And um, it in the in the beginning, I was very nervous about it because it felt like. It's it's all it seems like I'm touching almost a philosophical part of containers. They are stateless. They do not need to be migrated. Right. So it was always I was afraid bringing this up at at, at a Kubernetes level because they would say you're crazy. Nobody needs this. So um, an interesting uh, development from from Google side is um, uh, which I was also mentioning later, uh, but. That's okay now. I can mention it now. So they use internally. They use the the um, container runtime. I think it's called Borg. And mm -hmm. when when one of the central conferences where the Cruio developers and the container developers meet is usually Linux Plumos conference. And two years ago, at Linux Plumos conference, um, Google um, presented how they use Cruio in production in Borg. So. Google actually uses this to live migrate containers from one system to another in production in Borg. So um, this is the point where I think if, if Google is involved in Kubernetes and if they use it internally, even if these are different groups, um, this might make it easier to get um, migration into Kubernetes um, at, at some point. So um, right. Huh, and this is definitely something I, I am interested in and in working towards to 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 get this done. Um, the, I, I, I think a few months ago I actually started coding it and um, I, I, I hit um, a problem pretty fast um, because um, it's it's not a it's not a bad problem. It's it's just um, so in Kubernetes you usually have I think there are always pods. You have multiple containers in a pod. Mm -hmm. And they all share um, the PID namespace. And 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 what Cre what when and if you point Creu to a process which is in a PID namespace, but um, it's but if I I, I so, forgot it. But the problem is Creu cannot um, checkpoint a, con a process I think out of a PID namespace and into another PID namespace into. I opened a pull request at Creu. It's currently in discussion. So I, I guess we will have pretty soon the possibility mm -hmm. in Creu to get a process out of a PID namespace and into a PID namespace. And once that in, in Creu, I can continue my work trying it in one of the Kubernetes runtimes. I'm actually trying it in, in Cryo um, to get um, yeah. container checkpointing working and restoring. And once that's done, I can think about migration. And once that's done, I can think about Kubernetes. So it's, it's a lot to yeah. do. Steps, I think about the layers, the, yeah. the many layers of the onion of, of container orchestration, definitely, container yeah. runtimes yeah, and so forth, so on. Yeah, like I get it. OK, that's that's about um, Kubernetes. Um, OK, so now we already are in 40 minutes, I see. So maybe I'll make it a bit faster now. So I want to talk about Creu a bit. There's something at 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 what what's eleven? There's another uh, broadcast, right? Uh, yes, at eleven there is another one. Um, okay, I'll, I'll have to finish at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, about Creu. Um, um, so to migrate a container, the first step is you have to checkpoint the process, and and Creu does this using ptrace. So it uses ptrace to stop the process, and then it starts collecting all the information about the process and writes it to disk. And it takes information from proc pit to write it to disk. And and this is also a reason why Creu is called checkpoint restore in in user space, because 
Before Creo, there were other implementations of checkpoint restoring in, in Linux, and they um, partly were working all in the kernel or on, in some different way to intercept system calls. And Creo is kind of the result of the last 10, 20 years of implementing checkpoint restore. Uh, and, and Creo is the thing which it seems most of the communities have accepted as a way to go. So Creo uses from the beginning existing interfaces like procpit to get information out, out of it. And one other interesting thing about uh, Creo is, is what, a, what it's called the parasite code. The parasite code is, is kind of my most favorite part of, of Creo because it's also the, the craziest part of Creo if you know what it's doing. It's <laughs> the parasite code, like its name says, it's injected into the running process and then it's running as a daemon in the address space of the process. Using this um, technique, um, the main Creo process can talk to the parasite code and get information about the process from within the address space of the process. So we're inside of the process, getting all the information out, writing it to disk, and at the end, um, the parasite code is removed again from the, from the process. The process never knows it was under control of Creo or the parasite code, and, and, and then it just continues to run, or the process is stopped, killed, whichever you want. How just like you find it, yeah. 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 So that's and interesting. Yeah, it is, and it in, in a in a simple diagram, it would look something like this. Here, it's um, we have the original uh, process code, and replace replace we we move out one part of the code, mm -hmm. and replace it with the parasite code. We keep the old code uh, available, so we can put it back in later, and so the parasite is running. And once we finished, we just put in the old code back into the pro in the process in the address space there. And then, and then um, checkpointing is finished, and all the information is written on disk. And then I think I mentioned this target process is killed or continues to run whatever, whatever wow. you want. So yeah, I could definitely see why that doesn't quite jive with the uh, the whole namespacing paradigm and everything else. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that's very very cool uh, in in the sense of like how you can manage pro like everything is a process essentially right and you can manage processes in any number of ways please continue yeah so um i i have a, a few slides about uh, container life migration as an se linux um i'm, I'm I'll, I'll skip those um but um to get a uh, crew working with a podman on Fedora and RHEL, I of course needed um, complete SE Linux support there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that the container is running with the same labels um, after restore than it was before. This was some work. There was support in, in Creo um, since 2015, but it was only focused on up armor at that point for, for LexC, for the LexD and integration. And um, and it was basically um, the SE Linux support was basically um, this, um, if you're running under uh, some kind of context which is different from unconfined, I, I'll just um, stop doing. Creo just stops doing it and, and says, "I don't know how to handle it." Right. So there were a, a, a couple of places I had to change in Creo to to get it working directly. Especially you have to think about the parasite code. The parasite code is running inside of the container process, mm -hmm. and suddenly something from inside of the container wants to talk to a process on the outside. So this is things um, SE Linux will not allow um, uh, um, out of the box. So we had to get additional policies and do the labelings of the sockets and processes correctly. And then especially during restore, it's also interesting because Creo does a lot of things which you do not expect from a process happening. So we have also additional policies there to make Creo run um, under control on SE Linux. And, and the basic uh, thing, what we did is um, we basically write the SE Linux labels as late as possible. So we run okay. under outside labels as long as possible during restore. And then just one of the few last things we do before giving control back to the process, we switch to SE Linux label and we manage to do it in a way that it that it actually works. So nice. um, 
as the Linux is finished, so now we have checkpointed the process, we have dealt with SE Linux. Now the second last step of container migration is to restore the process. And this basically is, um, we read all the checkpoint images um, into memory and like the ones we've seen before and try to uh, recreate the process as it was um, before checkpointing. Um, <clears throat> What CRIU does is basically, um, if you, in, in my initial uh, test program, minimal, it was just a single process. So CRIU has just to create one process. But if you have a large process tree, like with the Java, a program with a lot of uh, processes and threads, um, CRIU will create a child process and a new thread for each thread it has to restore. And using clone or clone three. This was also something I was planning to mention, but I'm not. Um, so we're doing something called a PID dance. <laughs> um, uh, one of the problems with, with CRIU is if you're running, if you're not running as a container, um, CRIU, and if CRIU wants to restore a process, it usually, uh, it no, it requires that the restore process has the same PID as the checkpointed process. And this can lead to PID collisions. And if the PID is already used, then um, CRIU will just stop restoring. And if you do it in a PID namespace, you, of course, do not have this problem because the PID namespace is empty when you, when you do a container restore. So, um, um, but to, so this means CRIU has to recreate a process with the same PID. And that's uh, what we used to call the PID dance because it's a bit complicated. Or it used to be a bit complicated in Linux. Now it's easier when we introduced um, uh, setting of the PID with a new syscall clone, which was introduced last year, just mm -hmm. going over this year. And this is what I meant here. Um, CRIU creates all the child processes, and then the processes are morphed into the destination processes. Mm -hmm. And one interesting thing to this, uh, or one easy um, example is, if, at least I think it's it's good to understand our file descriptors. When uh, when CRIU checkpoints a process, it records the file descriptor ID, the file name, and the position of the file descriptor. And during restore, it just recreates the file descriptor. The same ID pointing to the same file name, pointing to the same position in the um, in the file, and when the control then is given back to the code uh, of the of the original code, the file descriptor will be the same, pointing to the same file to the same location. And if you if the process reads something or writes something to the file, it will be at the right location. And that's what CRIU basically does with a lot of the resources it, it tries to restore. It maps all the memory pages back to the right setting, uh, place, loads the security settings as late as possible, as mentioned. And then CRIU just jumps into the old code, uh, in, into the restored process, and continues to run the process. And that's how CRIU um, does its magic. Um, magic, right, yeah. <laughs> and now to, <laughs> now to container life migration uh, a bit more. Um, so there's um, the the whole crew thing came from from uh, um, from the container runtime OpenVZ because they um, they invented crew to provide container migration for their users um, from the beginning. Um, they worked on it. They invented crew. They wrote a lot of code for crew. So um, that's why I'm mentioning OpenVZ here as, as the first. I never personally used it myself, so I'm I'm not familiar with it, but that's where CRIU comes from, and, and it's integrated there. Then, um, like I mentioned, um, Borg from Google, they use it um, in production to live migrate containers from one host to another. They use it especially um, if the load on one host is critical. So if they have to free up for, I think what they said is, especially if, if, you, if you have interactive jobs, like, I don't know, mail or something, right. and, the user, and the users want to have, have it, it should be fast. So if there's something running in the background which takes away your resources, like, I don't know, video transcoding or something like this, this will be migrated off. They cannot migrate things like interactive um, mail reading things or, or, mm -hmm. or, or spirit because that's, their crew is too slow. You would um, see it in your, in your web browser that something was not working as expected. But um, for, for background jobs, which take a few hours, um, they yeah. use um, live migration there. Wow, that's cool. That, ex that I mean, that actually could explain why some of my crazy search filters take some time. 
<laughs> Gmail, right? Like it, it, it might actually be migrating that container to another system. <laughs> it, it's entirely possible. But I mean, you know, you're filtering through thousands or tens of thousands of emails. It's, you know, anything yeah. possible at that point, right? Like, but I've noticed that it does take some time to, to create complex filters and this might be part of it. Interesting. Hmm. Who knows what's going on back there in Borg land? <laughs> Yeah, and then there is um, there's an integration like C, like C uh, with Quiu for some time um, already. They they had a pretty um, nice integration there. Then there's a Docker integration, which I would say at this point is basically unmaintained, unmaintained so nobody is actively working on, on the Docker part of Quiu as as far as I know. And then there's the the, the Podman integration, which I did for the last two years, um, and I'm pretty happy about the results. It works pretty good. Um, especially, I'm, I'm happy about a, a possibility to export the whole checkpoint into a file and then transfer just one single file to the destination system and have yeah. um, container migration working. Um, exactly. It's that use case. That, yeah, yeah. there's that use case I was telling you about earlier. If I got a bot and I need to move it, you know, it's only running on one pot or one container on one box, I can kick it off to another box anywhere I want. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. And then Podman, I don't have to mention that here, I guess. Um, so, yeah. When so, um, I as the first discussions I had with the Podman developers was, I think, in 2018. In I think it's, I was talking to them at DevConf, and I was asking what they think about Checkpoint Restore, and it was, yeah, if you provide the patches, sure, we will merge it. Yeah. Um, and then I. Um, I think I, the first code was there around May 2018, and in October it was then merged. This was just a checkpoint restore support, which we saw in my first demo, right. where I rebooted the system, and this required changes to run C and Creu and, and Podman, and then I continued working on it and to get a live migration working with the exporting of the checkpoint. This was done in June, this was finished in June 2019. Again, run C, Creu, SE Linux, Podman at all levels. So this is, makes it really interesting because you have to wait until all the pull requests all are the really yeah. All, yeah, all the different patches are applied across the board. Wow, yeah. yeah right. Complex and, problems. Yeah, and this is actually what I mentioned. Uh, the checkpoint includes file system changes. This is mm -hmm. something which is important for users uh, and, and which makes it easy so you don't, but did you do a, I don't know, Podman uh, commit and then Podman export the file system and import it on the other side? So if this this needs to be all in the checkpoint. And this was my goal to have it, um, to make it um, easily usable for, for, for users of um, Podman uh, container migration. So um, now I have a few slides showing my, my, my demo. I will do it live now. This is just backup if it might fail. So I will... Unshare. Okay. I will share my terminal again. Looking in the reflection behind me. It looks like it popped right up. There we go. All right. Okay. Look at you. Yeah. So, Podman PS. So, I actually have it already prepared. I think um, a lot of there. I already did an export. Let's do an export once more again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Podman container checkpoint minus L, keep it last and minus error, keep it running, and then say export to the checkpoint tarball. And now it's there. We saw this message before. Yeah. Ignore the uh, error, as expected. Yeah. Uh, and now let's transfer this um, container checkpoint file to my other host. So it's 79 megabytes, so it's not that big. So let's go to the other host. And do I have a container running here? No, Podman container restore import. And now it's doing the restore. It takes like five seconds, something like this. There we go. And let's 
see if I can talk to my container. And again, my, my magic long command, I say podman inspect to get the IP address, and then I talk to the container. I, I would say we now should get back a seven or eight or something like this. What do we get before? Okay, it was oh. an older checkpoint. Okay, but if we now um, do a restore a second time under a different name, hello five, we should get back get back again uh, four, I guess, from the same checkpoint. And now I say again last container IP address, and there's a there's again the four. So uh, yeah, that's it. So I now I have hello three and hello five and uh, restart here running migrated from the other system, live migrated, probably depends on your definition of live migration, um, but at least a stateful migration. Um, right, so, stateful uh, migration, I think, like whether it was automated or not, I think the, yeah. the fact you can demonstrate a stateful migration is pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, so, so there's actually CRIU supports. So virtual machine migration, as far as I know, they, um, they, what they do, do they do pre-copy. So they copy mm. the memory before, uh, then do migrate it, and then they do post-copy to get the memory. Yeah, um, they sync and, it. And CRIU, and then, CRIU actually yeah. can do this. Um, I've done uh, a demo migrating a container uh, actually once around the world in, I think it was OSS Europe 2017. I was migrating a run C container once around the world, and I was using pre-copy um, exactly for that because so the client connection would not um, abort um, because of, of long um, container downtime. So pre-copy basically does a dump of the container. The container keeps on running, and I'm transferring the data to the destination. And once I have the initial checkpoint transferred, only the delta is um, transferred, and the downtime is much shorter during um, that time. So this is already my, my last demo, and I'm awesome. already almost at the end of my slides, I think. This should be the right slide. Can I see it in your background? No. Ah, OK. What I think I if I do not actively cancel the sharing, if I just select a new, a new window, yeah. then it doesn't. Fun. Okay. That's so there we go. I All right, good to go. OK, now this is. So the slides now are only my commands I was using uh, for, for container migration. This is mm -hmm. still migrating the same container. This is also the same container here. And this is the, the thing I, I, I ah. have no idea what it will be called, but something right. to migrate a container under Kubernetes, mm -hmm. whatever that might look like. And then the other thing I mentioned is um, non-root checkpoint restore for nice rootless Podman containers or for, for JVMs or whatever use case. Everything, Especially yeah. in high performance computing, people are also interested in checkpointing, restoring, and they can Yeah, like I would imagine the, the, the C run folks are like super interested in this. Um, oh, I'm, I'm already working with C run. It's, um, it's already, it's CRIO support and C run is almost finished. There's a, oh, I cool. Think one, there's one small pull request which I need to get into CRIU. And once the next CRIU is released, I can update C run. So I have locally Beautiful. all C run working with CRIU. Um, but there's, again, a few layers I have to go through. <laughs> until <they're laughs> yes, of course. There's always layers. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Adrian, this was wonderful. Please finish your slides. Okay. No, this, is, this is just a summary and okay. a few links, and that's it. So, so uh, yeah, if you want to give me a link where folks can find your slide at some point, I can share that out. Uh, okay, I will I will do that, yes. I will yeah, just, I can share that on the social media, and uh, folks just look to the uh, OpenShift Twitter stream uh, okay. for those links. And, uh, yeah, we can go from there. And Adrian, thank yeah. you so much for joining. This is super cool stuff. I got to get my hands dirty with this. I can already see some use cases for myself. Right. Like, okay. so uh, thank you so much for coming on today. Stick around, folks. Uh, I will be joined here momentarily by the one and only Jimmy Alvarez, and we're going to install uh, Red Hat's uh, Advanced Cluster Manager and get crazy with it. So cool. Adrian, thank you so much for coming on and showing us CRIU. I appreciate all your work on the project and all the other various projects in between to get to where we are today because I think this is genuinely helpful for folks. So thank you so much. Okay. Thanks for having me. All right, folks, stick around. We'll be right back. Yeah, bye.